Okay, in today's episode of Boating Basics, we're going to talk about watching and reading your gauges at the helm. Gauges are very important, but they don't always tell the whole story. So let's learn about that. Let's go. If, especially folks that have the same model 330 Sundancer as we have, if one engine runs hotter than the other. And my reply is always, my gauge shows one engine being slightly warmer than the other engine. But I always follow that up by saying, the gauges that are on this boat, they're uh, Teleflex gauges. They're not the greatest of quality. They're decent, they're fair but I wouldn't call them 100% accurate all the time. We've been boating now for 20 years. Uh, this is our fifth boat, sixth boat actually. And I found always since day one that the gauges are only as accurate as what you think they're gonna say. And what I mean by that is, for example, this is a twin engine boat. So I have gauges for all the stuff on the port side as well as on the starboard side. Now this boat that we're currently on is a 98 uh, Sea Ray 330 Sundancer, uh, twin V-drive inboard engines, 454s, closed cooling. And so there's gauges for both sides. So port side shows tap, tamp, oil pressure, and voltage. And the same thing on the starboard side, as well as the two fuel tanks. And in the middle, there is a synchronizer. Let's start with the synchronizer. Now the synchronizer, I have learned years ago uh, talking mechanics and also reading this on uh, boating magazines back in the day when they were boating magazines were only in print saying that if you think your tacks are out a little bit like your engine red so if one is a little bit higher or lower than the other you'll, you're, ha you're gonna have a more accurate reading if you just go by the synchronizer as long as that's right in the middle even if one is showing a little bit faster or slower than the other trust your synchronizer now the other gauges are gonna be uh, fuel, and I'm gonna show you that as well. Uh, right now, we are showing dead, flat, empty on the port side, and if you watch my videos uh, from before, from this year, you'll come to realize that the sender is shot in that. I have a new one inside the boat, I just haven't got around to installing it. Uh, the starboard side is showing between three quarters and full. We have driven a total of, uh, at to this point, less than 10 miles after filling up full, full, full. So what I do is always uh, top up both fuel tanks every time right to the rim and then just go by my starboard gauge. And again, as accurate as that can be because it's already showing we're down, you know, probably 30, 40 gallons and there's no way we've burned that much fuel. That's what it shows when it's full and it, it'll hang there for a while. Now the next one is getting back to the temp gauges, which is the thing that causes, I think, a lot of people consternation. Uh, on this boat, it is showing the starboard side slightly warmer than the port side. Now both of these engines have fairly recent impellers in them, both within the last two to three seasons, so they have lots of life in them, and they're you know they're doing what they have to do. Um, I attribute that more to the gauges than anything. It could be the senders are slightly out, but like I say, as long as the gauges stay the same, and if one engine is slightly warmer than the other all of the time, just keep an eye on the gauges, make sure nothing changes. I remember when our kids were very young and they were driving the boat. They said, look at those gauges. You don't have to understand what each one is telling you. Just always just glance down, glance down. As long as everything stays the same, you should be good. We had an experience a number of years ago on our second Sea Ray 26. Uh, I knew the impeller was going on that thing. Never got around to fixing it until it was absolutely critical. And we were buzzing across the lake and knowing that 
if we were running at a slow speed so the impeller wasn't putting as much water through the engine, it would, it would creep up. So once we were out in the water and giving it some revs, it would drop down, the temperature that is. And it was good, so I'd watch it, watch it, watch it. And on this particular day, uh, the impeller blew apart in a million pieces, all the fins blew off it, and my temperature gauge went from you know, 160, 170 degrees and just pinned off scale, so I shut the boat off. And we ended up having to get towed in by the local police department, which was awesome. They happened to be just there, and I radioed them, and I'd see them, and said, see me with a guy waving his arms, um, can you tow us back in? No problem, so that was easy. Got that fixed, of course. Um, now the oil pressure, again, I replaced, if you look at my videos from last year, this is filmed in July of 2019. This time last year, I was showing, I believe it was the starboard engine, that that oil pressure gauge would flutter at different speeds, so I was a little concerned about it. So I ordered new uh, senders, replacement both engines, so they're brand new as of last year. And the port side is showing slightly less than the starboard side. But again, I just keep an eye, make sure that they're all kind of in sync all the time and should be good. You know you have a problem if something starts wildly moving up or down, then you have an issue which is could be related to the gauges, but probably related to whatever that gauge is showing you. Now one last thing about the gauges is that they're notorious for being poorly grounded. Uh, have, if you've ever take a, taken a dash apart on a boat and looking at all the wiring, I've said this before, the manufacturers stretch that wire to the last millimeter. They don't give you any extra uh, play, as it were. So times getting all the wires where they're supposed to go, um, it, 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 it's literally a stretch. So check your grounds, just make sure all your connections are good. I say well, last year when I was looking uh, to try and hunt down why the starboard engine was showing that that gauge wasn't operating properly. I pulled the dash out, shown you pictures now what it looked like. I actually swapped the gauges, the oil pressure from the starboard to the port side to see if that helped to no avail. So it was the cinders, but um, I disconnected all the wires on all of the gauges, cleaned them, sanded them, and put uh, dielectric grease on all the connections and tighten them back up. And yeah, that was that. So it was not a gauge issue, it was actually an issue with the thing that that was showing, which was the sender for the oil pressure. So I'm just gonna wrap this up as um, the next in my series of boating basics. Watch your gauges, be familiar with where your gauges are set when you're running. And remember at different speeds, they may show different, uh, different levels, shall we say. Oil pressure, especially if you're cranking the engine, the oil pressure should be going up. Uh, temperature may fluctuate, it shouldn't be too, too much, but it could. And um, <laughs> lastly, your fuel gauge, I guarantee, will drop over time, unfortunately. But keep an eye on that, that's a safety issue. Make sure you always got fuel. And what's the rules of that? One third there, one third back, one third reserve, which means make sure you have enough gas to get you a third of the way there, or sorry, a third of a tank to take you all the way to where you want to go, a third of the tank to get you back, and a third in reserve just in case there's issues because it is a boat and you will find over time there will be issues in uh, many times, especially if you uh, start doing some longer term cruising like we've been doing. Um, things don't necessarily work out to the timeline that you had anticipated. You may have to stay somewhere longer or later or, or travel a little bit farther, but that's okay. It's all part of the adventure. So again, hope you learned something. Hope that was a little bit insightful for you. And yeah, keep an eye on this series. I can, uh, there's a playlist, there's a link down to the playlist, and I will keep adding these things as they come to mind. It's always something to learn when you're boating with Boogaloo. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss any of the new boating videos coming out. You can also check out daily content on my Facebook and Instagram pages. So have a look at that. Now, if you'd like to support the channel a little bit more, check out my Patreon page to see how easy it is for you to help. 
And of course, you can head over to my main site at BoatingWithBoogaboo.com to find out all sorts of fun stuff. So again, thanks for following along. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for supporting the channel. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Sometimes getting all the uh, all the wires where it's supposed to go. Whoops. <laughs>